Smartphones are really the flavor of the moment. The phenomenon of apps and app stores is growing like wildfire. The interesting thing for me about smartphones is that many of the things that we were expecting way off in the future have actually come to us already. The technology pundits have been talking for years about things like surgically implanted computers and sensors embedded in our environment. But my smartphone is within one meter of me 24 hours a day and it's full of sensors measuring magnetic field, position, acceleration, and so forth. It's permanently connected to the internet and also to other objects around it. The practical difference between a smartphone and a surgically implanted internet device is not as great as you might think. As you might expect, Anissa has been looking at the security and privacy risks of smartphones. We've created a report that gives a comprehensive summary of the top smartphone risks for different kinds of users businesses, governments, and consumers. And we've also given some advice on using smartphones securely, particularly for businesses. Here's a taster of some of the results. At Anisa, we always like to take a balanced view. So first of all, we looked at some of the security benefits of using a smartphone. Actually, smartphones have better security in some ways. First of all, it's easier to recover from a loss or a theft of the phone. Most smartphones now include backup online. You can also remotely disable, wipe, or even locate your phone if it's lost or stolen. So what are the major risks of using a smartphone? First of all, what we call data leakage. That's data being stolen or leaking out of the phone. Smartphones are a gold mine of personal information. People store their entire life on their phone. And they do things like putting passwords and PIN numbers in the address book. Now what happens? if you have your password in the address book, and you also have an app which steals the entire address book or switches the entries so that when you think you're sending a message to your wife, it's actually going to an attacker. Secondly, for businesses and governments, if you're using a phone to handle sensitive corporate data or classified information, you should be very careful what apps get installed on the phone. That's because an untrusted application can quite easily get access to things like address book data or the keyboard cache of the phone and send it away to an attacker. Every year, millions of smartphones are thrown away by businesses with the most sensitive data still available on the phone. Finally, it's actually possible for apps to steal money off you by calling premium numbers without you knowing about it. Anissa has created a list of best practices for how to manage and implement smartphones in a business or government. We've also given some tips for end users and consumers. For example, create a whitelist of apps which users can install. Don't put sensitive contact data on phones where the user can install untrusted apps. For businesses, implement an acceptable use policy covering the use of business phones for personal purposes and vice versa. You can read more of our recommendations in our report at the following address.